Come on in, Facebook. Come on in. 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 Come on in, Facebook. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is your host, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III, Dean and host of the Brinson Connection. We're so glad and excited to be with you another week, sharing what God has done, what God is doing, and taking a look at the biblical narratives from our Sunday school lesson and make it application to contemporary life. What do we see? How do we understand God at work? God is sovereign in the land and we his people are excited about the fact that God is yet in control no matter what goes on, how things happen, what it looks like. I'm here to let you know and remind you that God is in control. I want to take time out to thank all of you, my Facebook family from all over the world that take time to listen to us. Some of you all are catching me live at this hour every Wednesday in Chicago, two o'clock time, uh, Central Standard Time. Apostle Dr. Cohen, Anthony Mallory, God bless you. Uh, Mother... Mother Robinson, God bless you as we come on today. Those of you that continue to support us and those who call us and those who share with us, we thank God. Those who are watching us by this program live, those of you that are catching us by Twitter, those of you that are, have subscribed to our channel on YouTube, you, you watching us by YouTube, no matter what time or day this is, uh, and you're getting this program, I bless you with God, and I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be thou blessed. Well, well, well. Well, a lot has happened this week, even on yesterday, uh, and we <clears throat> continuously in our assignment to study our international Sunday school lesson. The lesson today sort of kind of uh, has a lot to do with where we are as a people as individuals, as a nation, and humanity in the world. And so those of you that are studying with us know that we study the International Sunday School lesson. And the theme for this coming Sunday is the theme that centers around restoration and transformation. It's a theme that comes from the Lamentations. That's a book that a lot of people don't read. So the theme for the Sunday School lesson is called a plea for restoration, a plea for restoration written by Jeremiah. And it's taken from the printed text of Lamentations chapter five. So those of you in your own free time, if you pick up the Bible, here's a chance now to take some time out and read chapter five of the book of Lamentations, Lamentations. That's right off of Jeremiah. Some scholars said Jeremiah wrote it as weeping prophet. And so here within the Lamentations, he writes. And the Sunday school lesson, uh, and the lesson for today in our study, and as we look at the narratives from this text, I want to take a look at everyday life. Where are we? What has happened within the verdicts uh, that we got yesterday of, not, of, of, of guilty, guilty, guilty? How does that feed into where we are as people? where we are as a nation, where we are for those of us who believe in the Hebrew nation. Where is that? What is that all about? Those of you that understand the world and humanity's issues and sin nature in our communities and world, all of that has something to do with the Sunday school lesson on today. And so, therefore, we want to look at Lamentations chapter five. Um, we're going to be reading from uh, Lamentations 5, 1 through uh, 22. I want to take some time out and I want you to, I want to read this Lamentation uh, and I want to read it from the New Living Translation so they can get an idea of, the, of, of this chapter. 
Um, so many times we hear people preach and teach from certain parts of the Bible that we're familiar with. I could just go in and start talking about the text. But if you didn't hear the text and understand the context of the text, you wouldn't be able to get into it like I want you to get into it. So I want you to take a time out and I want you to give me your permission to listen to this text of Lamentations chapter 5 verses 1 through 22. And as you listen to the text, I want to see if you see yourself in the text. I want to see if you see any historical ideologies or principles in the text, whether it's from your people, your ethnic background, or people in the community that you're with, or people from other communities. I want you to take a look at who, who is the victim and the victimizers. I want you to take a look at spirituality issues as what happens when you turn away from God, if God has given you and assigned you certain things and you disobey him, even though he loves you, what is his judgments and his punishments? And sometimes you can get so caught up in the judgments and punishments that you don't even have the capacity to repent. You don't have the capacity to say, God, I need transformation. You don't have the capacity to restore yourself. And in this prayer, Jeremiah is sitting there and then take a look at what Jeremiah is saying because not only is he a prophet, he is a victim as well. And sometimes people that are preachers and leaders, they feel like they, they are above the suffering of the people. They're above the suffering, Apostle, Apostle Yancey. So sometimes we have to understand that we have to suffer as well. And so this lamentation, this lamentation I want to read is twofold. It's individual and it's corporate. So Jeremiah is going to talk to God about how he feel personally, his personal pain, his personal issues within the situation he found himself in, in captivity. And then he's going to take a look at the at, at the community, at the corporate. He's going to take a look at uh, the village or the village, the central village, the village. And he's going to take a look at the, at the larger component. So I want you to take a look at Jer this lamentation coming from a preacher that was in it, feel it, see it. Then I want you to take a look at the community of the ethnos group. I want you to take a look at African-Americans and how they have been experienced. I want you to take a look at the Hebrew Israelites in Judah. I want you to take a look at uh, 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 the different ethnic groups across the world. I want you to take a look at uh, the Japanese when they was uh, <clears throat> quarantined and put in concentration camps when there was a war going on and they bombed bomb Pearl Harbor. Look at the Japanese and, and all this stuff with the COVID situation. I want you to take a look at America and his representation with immigrants. I want you to take a look at America and his treatment treatment of the American Indians. I want you to look at America and those pilgrims who came over from other lands. I want you to take a look at uh, the Hutus versus the Wutus. I want you to take a look at ethnic groups in Africa fighting ethnic groups. I want you to take a look at Muslims fighting Muslims. I want you to take a look at nations and people because the Bible said in the last days, Nations shall rise up against nations and people shall. So I want you to take a look at the whole immigrant situation and why people come in over because they have running from different situations. So here in the text, we find the story of Jeremiah, the prophet that had preached to his people for 45 years. And here now they are reaping the benefits of 45 years and also when the prophet was told to write the vision, make it plain a hundred years ago earlier. And now the children of Israel are in captivity and Jeremiah is also in there with them living in through the process. So here is an individual lamentations of lament from him personally, how he saw things. And then also from a corporate situation, how he looked at it and looked at how things was affecting him as he looked at his community at large. So this is the lamentation. So in your Bibles in the Old Testament, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation from the book of Lamentations, chapter five. I want you to listen to me and I want you to see if you can hear some of the issues that are going on in our world today. Lamentations 5.1, Lord, remember what have happened to us. 
See how we have been disgraced. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We are orphan and fatherless. Our mothers are widowed. We have to pay for water to drink and even firewood is expensive, or you can say high gas bills, and electric bills. Those who pursue us are at our heels, are exhausted, but are given no rest. We submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough food to survive. Our ancestors sinned, but they have died and we are suffering the punishment they deserve. Our ancestors sinned. Slaves have now become our masters. There is no one left to rescue us. We hunt for food at risk of our lives for violence rules the countryside. <clears throat> Slaves, okay, we talked about. Over okay, verse 10, the famine has blackened our skin as though baked in an oven. Our enemies raped the women in Jerusalem and the young girls in all the towns of Judah. Sexual assault. Our princes are being hanged by their thumbs and our elders are treated with contempt. Young men are led away to work at millstones and boys stagger under heavy loads of wood. Children working. The elders no longer sit in the city gates. The young men no longer dance and sing. Joy has left our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The garlands have fallen from our heads. Weep for us because we have sinned. Our hearts are sick and weary and our eyes grow dim with tears. For Jerusalem is empty and desolate, a place haunted by jackals, foxes. But Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O oh Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys of our land. Or have you utterly rejected us? Are you angry with us still? Verse 21, restore us, O oh Lord. Bring us back to you again. Give us back the joy we once had. Lamentations chapter five, verse one through 25. This is the subject of the Sunday school lesson uh, for this coming week. And the theme for this lesson from Lamentation is a plea for restoration, talking about transformation and reformation to be transformed and to be renewed and restored. <clears throat> Within this text and narrative, we see a people that has been destituted and afflicted and caught up with certain situations and concerns to the point that they did not have the capacity themselves to restore, to renew, to be transformed. So here in the lamentation, Jeremiah lays out his concern with his pain and how he felt about himself individualized. And then he went corporate as he took and looked around in his neighborhood, looked around at his people, looked around at humanity and what he was seeing. And he says, the situation is so bad, even though people, some people can know what God will do. Some people can know that God can heal, he can deliver, he can set free, but the situation and the circumstances they find themselves in and their people that do know God, that know God, that knew God, they are in a situation where if they wanted to, they couldn't do it themselves. So here Jeremiah is saying, God, can't nobody do We We can't fix ourselves. We can't fix ourselves. We need you to fix us. We strayed away from this path so long, even though we know what's right. Can you, you, you got to do it for us. Paul said in, 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 in the book of Rome, when I would do good, evil is always present. Oh, wretched person am I who will deliver me from this body of sin? That which I know I should do, 
I find that I'm not doing it. And that which I know I should not do, I'm finding out that I'm doing it. Now, God, you got to help me because this thing and these iniquities and these sins that I find myself in, I hey, 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 I need your help. I need you to help me. I, I need you to fix, fix it, fix me, fix it. And that's why in the spiritual, our forefathers would sing the song, Oh, Lord, fix me. Oh, Lord, fix me. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me. Some of us is trying to fix ourselves. We have to come to the point that you can't fix. Some things you can't fix. Even in the text, we always use the Old Testament. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Solomon, God responds that back to Solomon, that if they come to the temple and pray in the place, he will heal their land. Well, guess, guess what? Jeremiah comes later on to a hundred years, two or 300 years later and say, hey, that Solomon, hey, we don't have no temple. They, they destroyed the temple. So we can't pray. They, we, we can pray toward it. But the temple has been destroyed. The city has been destroyed. Uh, the, the city has been burnt down with fire. The nobles and the kings and the leaders and the politicians, they've been co-opted by the system and they've been taken into Babylon. Then they come back and they destroyed the temple. They burnt down the temple. They burnt down representations of spirituality, all the things that represent morals and spirituality, the symbols and the signs of those, those entities have been burnt down. The city has been desolated. The neighborhoods have been destroyed and there we're jacked up. Our men have been incarcerated. They've been taken away from us, leaving families without fathers and without security. Our girls and our wives have been raped uh, uh, and our people are incarcerated. And not only that, we have child labor. The little kids is even working and we have to pay for our food. The land that we own, we don't own it no more. We can't pay the taxes of the land. And the people that live in the neighborhood around us that were foreigners, we asked them to help us out, to give us a handout. And so we got to dance to their music and we don't have anything. And so we got to pay for our own water. We got to buy water out of the land that belonged to us. We, we cold at night. We need to go out. We should be able to go out on our land and, and, and chop down trees and get wood. Now we got to pay for firewood from the people that don't even own our land. They took our land, walked in the land. It was The land was devastated. No structure, no zoning. Everybody thinks everybody, anybody could come in and do what they want to do. Everything is jacked up in the neighborhood. We're paying all these high prices. And violence is everywhere. Even the animals has overrun our neighborhoods. Lord, help us. Do you care for us? I know we've sinned. And some of this sin we did not do. Some of this sin has been inherited by our forefathers. Some of this sin is DNA sins of the fathers. Some of this stuff we didn't do. Some of the stuff we was born with. Some of the stuff we can't even control. So, Father God, I, we need you to help us turn us and heal us and fix us and restore us and transform us. That's the message. That's the message of Lamentations chapter five. Some of you all need to read Lamentations chapter five. You all read John three sixteen. You know, you go and you read in the beginning Genesis, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. But some of you all need to begin to look at other scriptures in the biblical text understand the biblical narrative and certain things that was going on in the biblical world during that time. And so Jeremiah here is in there. So when I begin to look at the text here, Jeremiah is in this. He's a victim too. He, he's right there. He's right there in the midst of what was going on and, and what was happening. Uh, you know, even though uh, according to uh, those persons who study uh, the narratives and the scholars, they say that uh, Nebuchadnezzar, when he came to Babylon, he came three times. <clears throat> the first time he came, he took the royal seed and the kings. That's where we find Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. And the Negro. He, took that, he took the special prize of the land and the kings and stuff, put out the eyes of the kings and all those kind of things. Then he came back again and he destroyed the temple, burnt the temple down, turned, burnt his temple down. 
and took the stuff and then come back again and laid the city waste. He, he took the people. He came back in and took the people and deported them out of the land. Burnt the cities down, the walls, destroyed the systems, the structures. He destroyed that and took them out of land and repossessed it and left the land open to anybody that wanted it. There's a tax sale to anybody that wanted it. He left the land open and the animals and other people in the land and left a remnant of poor people in the land. And so the, the, the story talks about uh, that Jeremiah is in the land. He's writing from a cave. Uh, there's other uh, scholars that say, well, there was a migration uh, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in and burnt the temple down with fire and got rid of the priests and the leadership that some of them of the people got up and they left and they migrated to uh, Egypt and Syria. They migrated down to Egypt and Syria. And they said that Jeremiah was in that group that migrated out of Jerusalem and left with a group that went south to Egypt. Now, that may be so. I'm putting that out there just to let you know because I know there are people who fact check me, U-F-A-C-T. You got Google. And so some of you all need to go and study the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations and see what happened. But that's that's kind of, uh, you will find that information that talks about the, the group. In fact, let me... Uh, let me let me uh, read out of the, some, the the commentary. Talks about the audiences that which Jeremiah was writing to. Number one, he said there are three possible audiences: persons who have been among the first to read or hear the words of the Lamentations. Read the first group would have been the exiles in Babylon, who at that time of his writings would still be reeling from the disastrous blow of their national religious pride. They've been taken away out their land. That was one group. Man, wow, wow. While they were really from the blow of their national religious pride, temple destroyed. Now, the second group could be persons who fled to escape. They fled, they fled, they fled. They here come Nebuchadnezzar back. The second group, could they fled to Egypt because they understood that the army of Nebuchadnezzar was coming back. So there was a group of them got together upon hearing that and they fled to Egypt. And then and some of the scholars uh, believe that Jeremiah went with this group to Egypt and never returned to Jerusalem. So that's out there. That's among the scholars. Then there's a third group that have been were the people who remain in Jerusalem, the poor, scavish people. The poorest in the land because the temples have been destroyed. The structures have been destroyed. The houses downtown was decimated. There was no cities and no buildings and no 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 structure. No, no. The roads, the trade routes, all that had been destroyed. And the poorest of the poor still left in the land because nobody wants to take the poor. So you had three groups of people. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar coming three times. First time he came, he took all. The, the high priest, the chief priests, the kings, you know, all the up middle, uh, upper middle class, all your doctors and your lawyers and everybody that was smart and intelligent had money. He took them. Isn't that something? Got them out the neighborhood. Then he comes back and says, okay, um, and I'm going to burn your temple down. Then he comes back again and on his way back again to tap the city and plunder the people. A group of people said, no, they got together and, and snuck out of the city. And left their houses, left everything open, and got in their group, and they migrated to Egypt. So those had, people had to have some money to get out of town. They moved down south. They left Chicago. Or oh, we just put, we contemporized and they left the cities. They went to the suburbs. They moved out. And the poorest of the poorest of the people was left. So these three groups of people is reading this lamentation of Jeremiah. So we got to understand that. So therefore, God has given them the land. They, they, when see, when God gives you something, you have to understand that God gives a requirement. Now, God gave the children of Israel the land of Canaan, but He commanded Israel to keep the land sacred and free of idolatry and pagan religion. That it, uh, that Israel was God's firstborn, and He gave them the land to occupy, but He told them there's requirements, and if you mess up, I'm gonna take it. I'm going to take it. You're going to suffer the consequences. Some of us, we may be suffering the consequences of things that God gave us. Because see, when God gives you something, he gives you 
it with requirements of how to keep it, requirements of how to maintain it, and also let you know the consequences of you not keeping what God gave you. So some of us, we have lost some things that God gave us. Oh yeah, oh yeah, God gave you an anointing, he gave you a job, he gave you this and gave you that, and you didn't obey him. He said, I'm gonna give you this, I'm gonna give you this position, I'm gonna give you a house, I'm gonna give you this, but when I do, this is what I want you to do, and this is how I want you to do, and we got it, and then what we do? Disobeyed God, did not do what God asked us to do, disobeyed the moral law, disobeyed the principles of tithing, disobeyed all the kinds of things that God said you need to do in order to keep what I gave you. See, sometimes salvation is free, but it costs to maintain it. Some things God gives you, but he wants to know, can you maintain it? You, I'll give you a new car, but can you put the gas in it? Can you pay the insurance note? Can you every now and then go get the oil changed? Can you every now and then uh, 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 go get the car wash? Or is it all nasty and dirty with holes all over the place? You ran into all the potholes and broke the... What, what, what is it? God does give and God does bless. But how do we take care of what God gives us? And how do we support the rules and regulation requirements to receive and have certain blessings and gifts from God. And so here in the text of Jeremiah and Lamentations, the children of Israel have violated the process. The Hebrews had violated the process. So they were uprooted out of their lands. The strangers had their stuff. The foreigners overran them. And the things that they had sitting on the top, they found themselves on the bottom. And so this is the nature of Lamentations chapter 5. And so these principles are found in the text. People, Jeremiah preached 45 years to his brothers and sisters. 45 years to his brothers and sisters. Say, hey, we got to get this thing together. Did they listen? No. They did not listen. Sometimes God will send you places to preach and teach and lead and structure and strategize. Folk don't listen. And sometimes you ask God, because sometimes we as preachers and leaders and prophets and people of social justice, we, we, we want to leave and run away. And then we jump back on and run our mouths about stuff. And we're not even in there. I know there's that one of the brothers that I see on TV all the time talking. I live in Riverdale, which is out. So he live right down the street from me. And I see him on the, on the news all the time talking about issues in Chicago. He, he live out in the suburbs. You know what? Sometimes you have to live, you have to stink where you live. You sometimes, and sometimes God do. There's nothing wrong with that, but I just I just thought about that. There's certain other people you see that are what the media has called them spokesmen. And when something happened in their community, you see their face on TV. Follow them where they live and see if they are victimized by what the other people are victimized, or they just out there, or maybe somebody is paying them to do what they got to do, or it may just be a side hustle. I don't know. Because there were false prophets during that time when, when, when Jeremiah was prophesying. The prophets, there were prophets there. They were, they were many of them. Judah had many prophets. Jeremiah wasn't the only prophet. And a lot of the prophets, they had false and foolish visions. And they wasn't telling the truth. They wasn't preaching and teaching the facts to the community at large. And so when I looked at that, I looked at today's world. I looked at all the things that's been going on with Black Lives Matter what's in our communities, our churches in our communities. And, you know, I've been looking at, as I go back and look at the Trump piece, where people try to prophesy that God said Trump was going to be two terms and all of that stuff. They supposed to be prophets, but I don't, I don't see them prophesying and preaching and teaching to their people gathered together. If you look at news, you look at all the major Christian religious networks, where are the leaders there? How, are they saying, let's pray for the uproar in our cities? Have they mentioned Floyd's name one time? Have they said anything about what's no? They some of them have, but in the generally, the white church is silent. The larger church is silent, just like some of the there are certain people, both black, white, Hispanic, whatever the churches in America, all of them should be preaching about truth, righteousness, and justice. But if you look across America, those people who say they prophets, don't, don't get me calling names, getting all this money, these mega church leaders, uh, they are quiet. While the whole world was watching, they've been quiet. 
They are quiet. They are compromising. They're not talking. They're not preaching. They're not teaching. They're not standing against just evil in the community. They're not doing that in, in general. Now, there's some who are. Uh, there are some. I'm not going to be like I, Elijah. I'm the only one left. No, no. I'm too smart for that. I know there are brothers and sisters, men and women, ethnic groups, white, blacks, Hispanics, that's, that's, that's owned together. I know there's a mixed multitude that stands about for truth, righteousness, and justice. I already know that. Thank God we have people of all colors, all kindreds, and that stand for righteousness. But there's a large group that you don't hear from them. On certain issues, they're quiet. <clears throat> and, and they're not consistent. And so all of that has something to do with the whole situation with Jeremiah. He's preaching and teaching about that, but yet other prophets were silent. And so here it is. We talked about that in the lamentation. And this Old Testament, the lamentation uh, uh, was one, he had an individual lament. Uh huh. The, 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 that was the first one, individual lament. He had a personal declaration of private pain and struggle. That's what the Sunday school lesson said. He had a personal declaration of private pain and struggle. That means he had to go to the Lord personally and privately and tell Jesus about what he was going through. He had to come and talk to Jesus himself. And some of us, when we're going through and we see our situations, circumstances, we can't just look at the community at large and understand what's happening to our people in situations and circumstances. It has no effect on us personally. So Jeremiah said, I've been affected by all this stuff that I just talked about in Lamentations. It's painful. I've been rejected. I've been talked about. I haven't been listened to. I've got all kinds of issues. i got PTSD. I've been traumatized. I, I, I got depression. Hey, hey, hey. God, look, this is how I feel as a prophet, as a man of God, as a teacher, as a community leader, as a person who lead other people. I've got some issues that I've got to bring to the table. I have an individual lament. I have a personal declaration of my own personal private pain and struggle. Even though I'm helping in the struggle, I got some personal private struggles. And so then the second lament in this lamentation is what we call the corporate, the corporate lament. And here in the Sunday school lesson, it says the corporate lament expresses the heart, the hurt. The corporate lament expresses the hurt and pain of an entire community. An entire community, the hurt and the pain of entire community. Do you not understand as a person that's a product of humanity, that if you really in tune with humanity as a human being, that there's certain things that affect you personally, then there's certain things that affect you that are community related. There's some things that affect you that's in your neighborhood. There's some things that affect you that's out of your own ethnicity, ethnicity, whether you black, if you black, there's some issues, black versus whatever that affect you. Even if you got half, you mix half black and Hispanic, then there's some things. And then there's just some people, some things that affect you as being human. There's some issues of humanity that are wrong and not right and situations, circumstances around the world as you watch the news and you say, that's not right, that's not right. These things are not right that deal with humanity in general. It affects you. Yes, it does. The greater community, the world issues, all, some of that ought to affect you. And then your local communities and issues ought to affect you. And then things regarded to your own race or your ethnicity, it ought to affect you. And things in your family, it ought to affect you. And just living life from day to day ought to affect you. So Jeremiah comes in this lamentation and he brings his individual lamentation to God and say, did you forget me? Where are you? Where, 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 you know, I'm doing all this stuff. And, but why is this? How is that? And as he does that, he said, and then when I look in my neighborhoods, and I look at my people, and I look at other people, and I look at the systems and institutions, some things ain't just right. They are affected. You are affected if you are part of humanity. And as you look at crimes, of humanity, crimes upon crime, humanity upon humanity, crimes and situations and circumstances, you are affected. So this Lamentations shows that the prophet 
and others suffered while the whole nation was suffering, while even the nation felt like they, why should they be doing this? Because this happened, this was because of their daddy, their mom, their granddaddy. This was happening generational, but God, you visiting the iniquities of my father. So why is this? But then at the same time, while I'm suffering and we as a group of us trying to get ourselves together, we got some knuckleheads that don't care nothing about you. While we talk about crime in our streets and situations, circumstances, we got some folk that don't care nothing about no God. They don't care about no God. They have no sense of spirituality. They continue to do what they do. So there's a juxtaposition out here where there's a group of people that have committed themselves to spirituality, to grow and get to know God, to better themselves and ask for forgiveness. There's another group of people who could care less. They could care less about God. They care less about spiritual issues. They could care less about the principles of life and justice and righteousness. They could care less. And so I'm, and then there's some people that will listen to you. You can make disciples. You can grow people. You can be a life coach. You can be a supported. And then there are others, no matter what you do, they're not going to listen. No matter what you do, you can't do nothing with them. And the other people can't do nothing with them. They just, they just do what they do. So here within this context of the narrative, we find all of these dynamics. And so therefore, how do we then understand what God is doing? How do we understand when the security of the village is jacked up, is messed up, and the neighborhoods are messed up? There is no respect for the elderly, no respect for the women and the, the children, no respect for education and the systems. Everything is messed up and, and just all jacked up. So the writer writes this and he says, God, have you forgot us? We're so, we're so, in, we're so incapacitated. There's so many things in our lives that... I want to is affected. We we don't even want to. We 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 just can you help us? Can you help us? Can can you help us in the midst of our inability to help ourselves? When I would do good, evil is with me continuously. When I would do good, I find myself doing what I shouldn't do. Oh, wretched man that I am. When I would do good, I find myself doing bad. That which I know I'm supposed to do. I realize I'm not doing it. That which I know I'm not supposed to do. Come on now. I can't do this. I can't. I find myself doing it. I know I ain't supposed to do it. I know it's wrong, but I find myself doing it. Uh, there's some things that is right. I know there's some things I need to step up to the plate. I know I need to talk about issues. I need to know I need to step up and say something. But I, those things that are right that I know is right, I just, for some reason, I'm not doing. Oh, wretched person. I'm in conflict with myself. Who will save me from this body of guilt and shame? He said, thanks be to God. It's through God's blood. It's through who he is. It's through what he's about. It's through the, the power of the Holy Spirit. He has to give me the power. Cause I can't do it of myself. I, I, I can't, I can't repent and come. I, I, I just need, so this is what the lamentation Jeremiah said. Oh Lord, help us, hear us. Oh Lord, you, 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 you got to turn yourself. That's what he says. He says, restore us. Oh Lord, you got to restore us. I can't restore myself. I can't start the process, but you got to start the process of restoration. You got to start the process. You got to pro start the process of me. And once you start the process, that which is in me, the Holy Spirit in me, he will help me now to transform myself. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I've got to understand what's good for me. What's your will for me? But you got to woo me now. You got to call me now. I've got the sense that you are reaching out for God so loved the world that he reached out. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever Ever believe. I only have to believe and have faith. If you, if I just can believe and have faith, then you can do the rest. But I need to, I, I need to call on you right now because right now I need thee. And that's the song. Then we read, we have songs in our worship celebrational life. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my savior. I come to thee. Huh? We have that. We have certain, certain certain songs that we have developed out of our struggle, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, trouble in my way. I do, but, you know, I lay awake at night, but that's all right. Jesus, he will fix it. I just don't like after a while, but right now, come on, but after a while, he, 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 he came to pass, but Jesus will fix it. Why would he fix it? Because I got to do something about it. I got to, I got to, I got to confront the situation for Jesus to fix it. 
I got to, I got to identify the situation for Jesus to fix it. I got to sell, I got to give him the permission to do what the old, what the old, 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 old deacon in the song used to sing, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine. Hey, 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 light shine over here. I give you permission to shine on me. I'm not going to hide no more. I'm going to get myself over there by the light. Let the lighthouse from the light, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. And if you find anything that couldn't, shouldn't be taken out, I want to be right. I want to be, hey, come on now. We, so, so here the lamentation, Jeremiah was laying out his lament of what he was going through personal, what he saw in his communities in corporate, but he was saying, okay, God, but I need you to fix it. I need you to come and restore. I need you to put in the process and start the process. I come to be, but I need you to take over my becoming. The transformational process. I need the power of the Holy Spirit to up it, get in there and then and, and start working with me. I submit myself to the process. I'm willing and waiting to repent, even though if I did it, if my dad did it, my mama did it, whatever, whoever, that, that's not the problem. The issue is, here I am, Lord. The song, here I am, huh? Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Come, come, here I am. Come, touch me, take me and make me whole. Make me whole, huh? You're the potter and I'm the clay. Make me, mold me. Start the process. Start the wheel of spinning. I'll spin with you. Come on, take me and make me. Remold me, re re refill me, use me for your glory. This is the process of transformation, the process of reformation. You can't do it on your own. When you want to do it on your own, you fail. But thanks be to God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that comes upon me and celebrates me, restores me, heals me, and fixes me. Then he continues in me and continues to upgrade me. You don't buy software and that's it. They always keep telling you, upgrade your software, upgrade your software. But after a while, sometimes you have to throw away and get some new hardware. Some of you all need some new hardware because the software of the anointing ain't fitting with your hardware. Some of you all need new hardware and new software. Some of you just don't even know how to use your software. The power and the anointing on you don't even know where to go, who to hang with, how to get high at, how it work. All of that is part of restoration. All that's part of transformation. And so this is what we need in our times and life in the promised land. And so here in this text of the Sunday School Lesson of Restoration, I saw some things and I want to read out, out of the precepts, the precepts for living. Precepts for living list some things out and I wanted to read it. Uh, and uh, the liberating lesson, the liberating part of the lesson, it says, as a community, we, we have our part for action and inaction as it relates to the status of socioeconomic conditions where we live. We are empowered to make our community safer and more economically sound by working cooperatively as in the past. The church must lead the way. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. As a people, we have survived the atrocities of slavery and segregation and systematic injustice with God as our source and strength. As a resilient people, we have to continue. We, we have to continue to pass down the heritage of how to strategically fight and pray, working across the generations to realize the true transformation and restoration that God promises when we look to him. We have to look to him. We have to understand that we've got to work through generations. There's no one generation that can handle this. We've got to keep on doing what we're doing. We can't fail. And when we have failed, we have to ask God to come and help us. That's the theme of the Black National Anthem. God of our, the second verse, God of our weary years, thou, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, thou who has by thy might led us to this light, keep us forever in the past, we pray. What are the past? The past of our ancestors. What are the past? The past of what's right. 
the path of truth and justice because what happens, we get caught up lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee. We get hung, hung up in high and trip out lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world. We forget thee, but shadow beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land, understanding our history, understanding our legacy, walking together and talking together, saying, God, here we are. Help us. Oh, God, fix us. Transfer us. We need a transformation. We need a restoration in our communities. So what we have to understand in the application for activation, the text says, life gets discouraging. And lamenting on the ills of our world is a common natural response. But after acknowledging the pain, we must turn the complaint into action. Once we come to God and say, this is our pain, this is our situation, how do we return our pain into action? There are so many ways for us to get involved individually and collectively to make a social impact. It's not only you praying individually, you got a private prayer and a private pain. You got to understand why you got private pain and private issues. You are part of a corporate, you are part of a larger community, you are part of the humanity. And so therefore you got to think both ways. As I pray for issues within my own self, I'm affected with issues as I look at it. But at the same time, I got to understand I'm a part of a larger community. I'm a part of a corporate. I'm a part of a family, a village, a larger village. I'm a part of a world. I'm a, I'm a, a citizen of humanity and I'm affected in all those forms and ways. And so I got to get to know people. I got to know people in government and legislation. I got to hold people accountable to what they say. I got to develop and work with faith-based initiatives and community at the faith. I got to be able to serve in common platforms. I got to engage in social media platforms, focus on solutions and help shift the conversation from the negative to make life positive. I've got to shift. I got to change atmospheres. I got to be the gospel. I got the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Be be the gospel, become the gospel. I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, sent to heal the broken, how to release the captives of, and, and recover the sight to the blind. You can't do that unless you can develop a trust relationship. People don't let you in close unless they trust you. And some of you don't let nobody in because you don't trust. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. And you've been trying to forgive. You've been trying to get over it. You've been trying to get it fixed, but I, uh, you can't fix it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 Jesus got to fix it, but you got to turn it over to Jesus. Uh, you got to pray. So if we look at that, <clears throat> as we come down to the end of the presentation, that's the Sunday school lesson for this coming Sunday, calling on restoration. How does that fit? As it, how does, how does this lesson fit into everyday life? How does it fit even to our situation and circumstances on yesterday? We had to look at three guilty verdicts, three guilty verdicts. What is God saying? What is God doing? What is God doing? In order to be, in order for there to be a revival, God uses certain negatives to move into a positive. Given the situation in nation and and, and and the whole situation that God set out a lamb. He said a lamb gonna be slain. And when this lamb is slain, this policeman is going to put his knee on the neck of my lamb, sacrificial lamb. I'm going to show the whole world what America is like. Some of America. I'm going to under, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show some of the racism and some of the hate. And I'm going to let the whole world put America on notice. I'm going to let everybody from all over the world, from America, the good, bad, and ugly is going to come out. And I'm going to let the young and the old and the... And the races come together and everybody from all over the world and say, we got to have justice. We got to have peace. I'm going to let everybody come up with a common thing. I can't breathe. I can't breathe because I got to let them breathe, but I can't breathe on them until they tell me they can't breathe. So I'm going to let this sacrificial lamb send a message to call out to his mother, to his ancestors and let them take his life extinguisher so that he can be a lamb slain so that the whole world can know. And the whole world going to follow it. 
and everybody. And then others say, well, you know the system. I don't know. I'm afraid. I don't know if they're going to be a verdict. And then after the verdict, and then they really didn't do right because he wasn't charged with first degree. He was charged with a lesser degree. But so, you know, that shows you, and, uh, and I don't know, but you know, but you know if they charged him with a first degree, they wasn't going to convict. So they had to charge him with a lesser. So you got all these dynamics out there. Then we don't know if he's going to get maximum, not maximum, and all that. And God said, but, uh, eh, but given the situation, the cities were prepared. Governors and mayors had sent for the National Guard. The businesses had been locked up and, and put boards on because they was waiting for what they thought was going to be a negative verdict. But I tell you, God is in control. He sits on the circuit of the universe. He declares what truth, righteousness, and justice is. And no matter what happens, principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, God got some folk. <laughs> he got some intercessors. He got some folk that got a word from the Lord. He got some folk that no matter how dark days are, every now and then he gives us lights of hope. And we got to do like Jesse, Reverend Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive. As long as there's hope, there's hope, there's hope. As long as I keep hope alive, there's a possibility that I know that the songwriter said, I know, I know, I know he'll make a way somehow. Oh, yes, he will. My, oh, yeah, the Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And so on yesterday, there was a way made when people was thinking, I don't know. The verdict is in. Everybody got quiet all over the world. There was a moment of silence. God said, okay, it is not going to be negative this time. I want you to know. And when they said guilty, 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 there were certain people that said, thank you, God. When he said guilty, 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 there were some people that acknowledged God. When he said guilty, 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 there were some people who said, well, there is a God. When they said guilty, 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 there was a testimony of the gospel. God is getting ready. He rolled off of yesterday's experience. Some people were gathered together. Some people got hardened, but there were some folk that said, now I know. Now I know there's a God. Now I know that God is able. Now I can believe him from that. I can see how he overturned. God said, I will overturn and overturn and I will overturn it and give it whose right it is. And yesterday we experienced God at work. Yeah, we experienced God has been at work, negative and positive. He's been at work all the time. But this time we experienced God as a way maker. Yes, sister Denise, he's a way maker, way maker. He made a way. For some folks, he made a way out of the way. You know, it tickled me all the legal the legal annex, uh, analysis and the pundits and the media and the news, and this and this and that. You know how they do. They they pro prognosticate and say it's going to be like this and like that. And when it don't be like that, they switch over and come up with a new presentation. They just run with the flow. Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus the Christ is still the Lord. And so yesterday, I believe God just, you know, he let us pause for station identification and say, uh, okay, now you all can go back in your praise and worship and sing, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Pick me up and turn me around. He picked up the system and turned the system around. We don't Normally convict police. He said, huh, I'll turn the system around. I don't care what they don't normally do. This is time for transformation. This is time for restoration. This is about new wine skins. This is about church as not traditional. You know, no. Worship and religion is traditional. I'm going to work. I'm got to work in new dimensions. So come on, church. I told you there are three things about church. God has called us to be the church, but in order to be the church, you got to be equipped. So the equipping of the church, huh? The equipping of the church is uh, you, 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 got to, uh, you got to be able to come and do church. All oh, this church. No, no, you got to come to Bible study. You got to get in a group of people and Bible study. You got to search the scriptures. You got to understand sound doctrine. And he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, what to do, church, to equip the saints. You got to be equipped. That's part of doing church. You got to do church in order to be church. 
in order to be the light, to be, to be the salt, to be the church, to be active in the community, you got to have training. You got to have understanding of reasons why. You have to have a reason etra. You got to have a reason for your existence. You got to understand why you exist. What is God's will for your life? What is his purpose? And that is you got to come and do church. You got to get with certain people, whether it's in a building or not, but you got to be trained. You got to be taught. You got to understand the principles. You got to understand the teachings of the principles of the church. And then you go out and be church. And if you do that, then you can come back to church and have church. Oh, we had some church. We jumped and shout and let it all out. God said, I will never ask you to be without ritual. There are always, in the longest we live, there shall be ritual, seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. There ain't going to be one side. If you seed time, you got to have harvest. I will always let you have a spiritual celebration. Come have church. Come sing and shout. Come cry and celebrate. Eat, go, go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. I need you to experience joy and ecstasy. And celebrate in your presence is fullness forevermore. I was glad when they said unto me, praise them on the instruments and pray. Oh, I got to have me some church. But I'm having church because I've been out being the church. And I've been out being the church because I qualified myself to stick around to do some church. Do some church. Be taught. Be trained. Read. Study. To go out and be the church. Come back and have you some church. Oh, yeah. And so, therefore, those of us I know all across the country, the church that looked at the guilty, 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 you can have your some church today. You can celebrate. I once was blind, but now I see. I, I didn't understand that Jesus will fix it. I didn't understand that there was power over the judicial system. I did not understand that no matter what the situations are concerned, and I had prepared myself. The armies was there. I prepared. The police was told you're going to work 12 hour shifts. People that got wood and stopped it up on the walls and put it over the glass. We don't know where people going to go. What people going to do. They're going to tear up the cities. They're going to burn down the stuff. God said, no, not so. Not so. <clears throat> not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Maybe four. But no, not this time. We're not going to have an economic debacle like last time. Somebody pray. Somebody got smart. Somebody prayed for me, as the songwriter said, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. Aren't you glad? The songwriter said, pray for me. Oh, my brother and my sister, pray. When you bow at the altar, pray for me. Uh, come on now. Come on. We understand that. You're my brother. You're my sister. Come take me by the hand. Together, we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. As long as there is love, the love casts out perfect Perfect love cast out fear. Maturing love cast out fear. We can stand. You're my brother. You're my sister. Come. Come. Oh, the situation's affected all of us. We have some individual pains and laments that we bring before God. But in my individual situation of going to God, I got to understand he's not my daddy, but our father. Some of y'all, when you go to prayer, you say, oh, God, my daddy, God. God said, no, I'm not just your daddy. I got some other kids call me father. I'm, I'm our father. I will say our father because you're not the only one. You've got to relate to me. But when you relate to me and I empower you, you must relate to others. That's the triangle. God, God, me and God, me and God, me and God. God is talking to others. While God is talking to others, I got to reach out the bottom part of the triangle. Others, I got to go talk to others because others are talking to God. And so our father, as we work together, commanding God, acknowledging our sins and our translation transgressions. Lord, we are victimized by situations and circumstances. We now, the, the economy is jacked up. We got to buy our own water, our food bill and stuff. Our houses are taken. We're in the land. We all jacked up. But God, together we stand together with one accord, not on one accord, but with one accord. And we say, God, forgive us. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our transgressions and and wash us thoroughly, as, as David said, wash us thoroughly from our, oh, oh forgive us uh, for our transgressions and our sins. We've done, we've sinned before thee, God. And so, God, the sin and the frustration and the community issues, the online stuff, the jacking up of this, 
the car stealing and all that kind of stuff, the murder and the thief. Uh, we talk about the police didn't kill this one and the police didn't shot that one. But we, 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 if we leave the police out of it, how many other people shooting each other every day? Somebody shooting and killing and maiming. People ain't talking and killing and jacking each other up. God, my own familiar friends have hurt me and wounded me. And so, God, I'm wounded, I'm hurt by not only the police, not only the injustice of the systems, and some of you all are saying even now, when you're talking about racism, Apostle, somebody, Apostle Branson, you saying racism, what white folks has done, but everything I've gone through has been my brother, my sister, my friend, my girlfriend, the first down the street. Everything that negative happened to me in my life has been through black people. It ain't been no white folk. Well, that's because you didn't understand. They were victims of another system. So all of us is in it together. And yes, there's a system, a system of racism, both covert and overt. It's unjust, and yet people are unjust. And one thing leads into another, and it's all together because of the nature of sin. Because sin is in the land. We need to get back to our God, true to our God, true to our native land. My brothers and my sisters, the African people from the African diaspora, the Hebrews and the Judites, and all of those across America and across the nations, all the nations of the world, to the immigrants and to the foreigners, all of that. God said, you can't, you can't oppress the immigrant. You can't oppress the foreigner. You can't, no, 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 you got to love, you got to love. And so all of us, no matter where we are, there is an iniquity, there's a, there's a, there's a violence that's in humanity that crossed the barrier of ethnos. There's a violence in families, there's a violence in the, in the same group of families, there's a violence in clans, there's a violence in governments, the North versus the South, the East versus the West. The Arabs, the, the divisions of this, this group is the same color, but they got five different divisions in it. And so we, while we're dealing with racism and it's systemic racism in America, which is a truism for uh, uh, black and oppressed people, we've got other people in other nations and groups in America. And we got other folks that not only does black lives matter. Yes, it does. Every ethnic group matters. Yes, it does. And all of humanity lives matter. And so as we deal with our individual needs, our individual concerns, there's a corporate wider, broader in, in need called humanity at large. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So all of us, red and yellow, black and white, all of us are precious in his sight. Jesus loves us everyone and so we've got to experience Jesus we got to understand the God the God that is God we have to ask him to come in now and take over in our lives and our experiences because we so jacked up by the frustrations of the times that we have been in that we ourselves and our own self can't even do it but God if you reach out to me one more time if you give me the strength if I know that you can reach out to me if I can see the light on the porch, I'm the prodigal son, but if you stand there and wait for me, meet me on my way in. I, I, I'm here, so God said, come on, come on. I'm standing at the door and knock. I'm going to knock. I'm, you, I'm going to knock. I'm going to knock. God, knock. God, let me hear you knock. I'll open the door. You, if you open the door, I'll come in. We're going to sit down. We're going to sit. We're going to eat. We're going to talk. We're going to move towards some transformation. We're going to get you restored. Isn't it good to know that God is a God of restoration? God can transform your life. I talk to you, my brothers and sisters, and you all across the world. Let yesterday's guilty, guilty, guilty be a sign that God is in control. Pause and for station identification and saying, I am in control. So, so now what? How is that? Well, I've been your host. Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III, the Dean of the Brinson Connection. We've been talking about our Sunday school lesson, A God of Restoration and Transformation from the book of Lamentations chapter 5. Go back and read Lamentations chapter 5. See the information and issues that the children of Israel had found themselves in as they were victimized by Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar and destroyed. And yet the cry is, God, did you forget us? The answer is no. God, do you still love us? The answer is yes. Out of our, my love for you, I punish you. I brought my judgment on you, but I want you to know I will come and get you. I will come and get you. I'm married to the backslide. I will come and get you. 
in spite of everything, I'm still God. And besides me, there is no other. So until next time, go look. Understand that God can transform. He can transform. He can take your form and move you to another form. He can restore and transform. Some things he don't restore, he just transform, he just change it. But he'll restore you back to your principles. He'll restore you back to your destiny. Some things he's just going to let burn out. He's going to transform that. So whether you need transformation and restoration or both, God is able. He's here. He's working. Let him work. Let him do for you. Until next time, God bless you is my prayer.